And he's going to talk about user profiles, web communities, user modeling, some of the things we are very much interested in. So, Thank you. So good afternoon. Actually, the, the name of the university is Goethe. I'm not German, but Goethe is a big thing in Germany because uh, uh, he was a famous poet and writer in the back in uh, a few years ago. Um, before I start the presentation, I'd like to give you maybe uh, a very brief uh, background information of who I am so that you get like a perspective of uh, the reason why I started to do this work. As a background, I have more than 20 years of uh, computer science background in databases. Um, I spent a lot of research, in particular, on object databases uh, back in the 1890s. Um, object databases actually did not really make it in the market, but we did a lot of research on that area. Um, in, uh, in the meanwhile, I also had, for 10 years, a company where I was co-owning the company, and we did actually some uh, a business in uh, conferences and trade shows. We come this year in the States. I was often in Boston, back in Europe. But the, the reason why I'm mentioning it is because we had a lot of websites that we've been de uh, designing and using it for uh, e-commerce, like selling conferences or trade shows. So I became very exposed to using websites for a business reason. And when I closed down the company a few years ago, then I, um, uh, I wanted to do something different than simply doing, continuing doing research in database. And with the, I have a small group of researchers in Frankfurt. We are six all together. And we wanted to do something on using web technology for helping owners of websites, whatever the reason why you have a website. And we came up with this uh, project uh, called Google Barra 2.0, which is an attempt to create tools for building and managing a profile of web users. Well, the name is actually something funny. It's a, uh, it's a bird in uh, Australia. And the idea is to create tools helping the owner of a website to understand better the interest of their user. The assumption that you have to be registered to a website, so you are willing uh, to give your information, your profile. And there must be a reason why you are registered on this website. And the owner might have a business reason why he has this website. And we build a user profile for each user. If you have no profile, then the work we do is not of interest because we are not able to then uh, track your interest. So what is the goal? The goal is to give the owner of a website a, uh, a tool that you can customize it with parameters to understand better the supposed interest of a user on a website. That could be also useful for qualifying better the uh, members of the community. So what we do, we are actually creating a profile for uh, each registered user. And we collect in the profile not only the obvious information, the one you are already giving us, like a name or address, but also we try to understand what you've done on the website, and we analyze some of the action you do, or the pages that you look at, the duration. But at the same time, and this would be like traditional clickstream, but we also ask the user for a feedback. So the, the, the innovative part of, uh, of building this profile, that on one side, we look at the user behavior on the website. At the same time, we're also asking this, the feedback. And then we compare what you've done on the website and what you told us, and we recalculate the, way, the profile, taking into account the difference between what you are doing on the website and the feedback. And then you have a bunch of, let's say, you have a, a million uh, uh, user uh, on a website, and each one has a session, and you calculate the profile maybe one or two times per session. You have a lot of numbers. And then it's very difficult to do something with all the numbers. And when we try to cluster user with similar profile so that we can show more visually classes of user that are sharing some kind of uh, common interest. So we cluster on profile, not on click stream. Now, why you want to do that? You know, there might be a lots of reasons. And I didn't want to 
uh, cast on a particular reason. So you have a website, you're the owner. Why you have a website and what are your business goals or social goals, you know. And that's perfectly fine. If you want to know more about your user, then the profile could be an interesting information. These are some of the reasons why you might want to have a, a profile for the user. And, and we are not really bound to any of them. I just want to go a little bit off from uh, the website uh, because I got actually a, a, a couple of interesting uh, ideas by going to places that have nothing to do with the website. In particular, if I go to a supermarket, everybody goes to a supermarket nowadays, I find a kind of interesting similarity between what's going on on a supermarket and possibly what's going on on a website. Uh, this is like, uh, I think it's a French supermarket. Now, if you think of a supermarket, um, sometimes you go to a special location. And in special location, you find something. Like, for example, here, you, if you're interested in wine, you get wine. If you're interested in meat, you go here. This is like a French version of the meat section. You know, if you don't want to cook, you go to the frozen food section, and you find something there. Uh, you might be more on healthy food, you go fruit and vegetables. And these are z areas in the supermarket where you find content. Sometimes you don't find the content because the supermarket is somehow complicated to uh, search. What do you do in a supermarket? Well, if I would have a camera and I would be able to track down what you do in a supermarket, you do all kinds of things in a supermarket. For example, I'm going back to the fruit and vegetable section. I can look at tomatoes intensively for five minutes. Or I can touch the tomatoes and see whether the tomato is ripe. I can take the tomato and put it back. I can take the tomato and weigh the tomato and see how heavy is the tomato. Or I can take the tomato or a bunch of tomatoes in a plastic bag and put it in my, in my uh, um, whatever I'm carrying in the supermarket. So I'm doing a lot of things in the supermarket, in particular section. For example, in the wine section, I might actually go and get the bottle and check on the date and uh, on other particular information that I found. So I take the bottle, I look in and bring it back, I look at the price and stuff like that. So there's a lot of activities going on in the supermarket. Anytime you do something, you show something of yourself. Beside that, I don't know who you are. You could be a kid following your mom, and you're taking the bottle of wine, but you don't really want to buy. You could be actually the father that's really interested in buying the bottle of wines. So there's a whole bunch of things that can happen in a supermarket, and each of these guys is actually doing something differently and similar, and he's showing some kind of pattern of behavior that could be interesting to analyze. Location are done in a supermarket where you try to put products that have some of the similarities. But location are not always the same. I don't know about here, but in, uh, for example, in Germany, which is actually sad, but close to the cash, you put all the uh, um, products that are actually very relevant. For example, I don't know, uh, definitely not in the United States, but in Germany, you'll be very surprised. When you go to the cash to pay, on top of the cash, you have cigarettes. That's actually amazing. So you go to the cash. You can't miss the cash because to get out of the supermarket, you have to leave the supermarket for the cash. And then you have all the cigarettes. You pay a lot of money to put the cigarettes there, and somehow the law allows you to do it. So the interesting thing is you are a little kid, and you are exposed to cigarettes. So location in supermarket are kind of... Uh, specific and the content you put into location are actually very important. You can put something very expensive or you can put something not very expensive in the corner of a supermarket where maybe people don't go very often. And on top of that, why you go to a supermarket? Well, it depends. It depends on who you are. Uh, you can pay something, but not necessarily. You can go to a supermarket because you are with somebody else and you don't pay anything, but you touch a lot of things. So at the end of the day, for example, the action I finally pay, of course, qualifies as a buyer. But what you've done before you know, was a, you know, an expression of the interest of what you've done in the supermarket. Now, this is what happened to me when I go to a supermarket. 
I was very interesting when I went to the cafeteria. I'm the first time at Google, but I used to work uh, at IBM here in, uh, in the valley. I was at IBM uh, Almaden more than 20 years ago, and the cafeteria there was very nice, but it was very different than here. Here you have a, a very dynamic cafeteria where people do all kinds of things. And for me, the cafeteria seems like a supermarket somehow. You touch, you, you do things, and you don't pay. But at the end of the day, you might take some food or not. So the question is, who are all these customers? And how do I know what they want? Well, I can track what they do, but that's only one part of the story because I might also ask the feedback, you know, and, and get to learn from them what they think is their interest and then try to compare it with what actually they do. So that's the starting point. And going back to a website, we wanted to offer a, a kind of tool set that you can parameterize and customize depending on your needs. So that's why we wanted to do something that is not bound to a particular strategy and offer it to uh, the owner. Um, and we call it non-obvious profile because that's a non-obvious part of the profile of a user. And we use parameters, so with this we can combine with the chosen parameter, deploy a strategy for managing these profiles. And again, the profile is done in two parts, looking at what you do and asking you a feedback. A uh, very brief history on the project. We started late in 2004 in, in uh, my group in Frankfurt. And we did the first toy prototype. We call it Google Barra 1.0. Just to show the idea, we presented a couple of CBIT trade shows. And now we are re-engineering the whole thing in Google Barra 2.0. We are at a design phase, and we will start some kind of implementation in parallel. So we also are mostly interested to learn what kind of feedback you might have. So, how does it work, at least in our approach? Each user should have a profile. The, the goal of the thing is that it is visible, it is known, there should be a reason why a user is registered, and there should be a reason why a user and the owner website do share a profile. If it's not reason, you don't use it, then that's not the point. The profile, uh, for the moment being, is only visible to the user, but nothing forbids that this part of the profile could be visible to the community. I got the feedback um, during one of my presentations. We didn't think about it, but it could actually show part of the profile, not the, the name, but the behavioral part, also to the rest of the community, and that could be like community-driven thing. Again. So, and the idea is try to understand the interest. That's also going to be our user. So the thing is, I'm the owner of the website. I define the topics that are related to my website. In our approach, for the moment, it is a static list. The pages can be dynamically created. There's no problem. But I should be able to list the topics related to the website. So for example, I can have a website with, has to do with products, people, support news in different parts. And the user profile is calculated dynamically every time you do something on the page and when you give a feedback, whether it is automatically triggered by an action or because you want to do it uh, explicitly. And then we try to cluster similar profile. Why you want to cluster? Because then you can actually show trends. For example, 5% of the community has an increased interest in a particular topic, whereby 10% uh, has a decreased interest in two or three topics over time, and something like that. It could be useful also to analyze the behavior of a community when you introduce a new service. You know, before introducing a new service, you try to analyze the behavior pattern of people. So where do we get the data? Um, we extract uh, the behavior from the log files generated by the web server. But then we combine it with the feedback, which is given uh, 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 by the user. So to be more specific here, if you look at the website, a bunch of pages, and each page has some content that you have actually created, you know what is the content, and you know about the, uh, the specific of the content. And not all the pages are the same. You know, for example, 
you can have a, a, an area up there where you don't really put anything significant. And the real important information maybe is in this part of the website or vice versa. You can perform action. You can download something. You can fill a form. You can pay. Or you can simply click on a link and something like that. So no all the actions are the same, at least from the owner perspective. So here is a point. We take, that's the uh, first uh, toy prototype. I'll give you a very brief introduction to the first prototype, and then I'll go further on, uh, on the, uh, the new prototype. In the first implementation, we were very naive. We started saying, well, I have a bunch of pages, and I define a number of topics related to this page. And for each topic, the owner gives a weight. And the weight is just a number between 0 and 1, 0 no interest, and 1 very interesting, from the owner perspective not from the user perspective. So in other words, I can have a bunch of pages, for example, on Java. But in one particular page, is maybe the introductory information, so it's not very heavy. So I put a uh, very low mark. Whereby if you click from there in another page, where maybe there's coding or something much more involved, I will put a higher weight. Because for me, whoever spent time on that page is for me more relevant, for me as an owner. I will then infer that if you spend time on the second page, you might be an expert in Java, or at least somebody that is more interested in Java. So for me, as the owner of the website, when I define a website, I, yes, I put topic uh, and content on the website, but I know why I have la the layout. I might have a teaser that people come and read something, but it's not really the focus of my interest. So I define for each page topics and then await. No, the first uh, prototype was very easy because what we did, we look at uh, each time a, a user was downloading a page. A page had a list of topics. The list of topics have a weight that was between 1 and 0. And per session, we were basically computing your interest by looking at the duration. So if this is the set of topics on a particular page, then you would uh, multiply by the duration you stay on that page, and then you normalize it by the duration of all pages to get the number between 0 and 1. Very naive for a number of reasons. Why is naive? Because I can spend two hours on a page, and it doesn't really mean that I'm actually doing something interesting on that page. I can sleep. I can go to the toilet, come back. I spend an hour on that page. On top of that, the page is very big. Maybe I'm only interested in the left corner where there is something on a particular topic, and I really have nothing to do with the rest of the page. But since I created the page and I put a lot of weight on, on, uh, on one part of the page, then I'm inferring an interest that you don't have. But that was very easy to demonstrate it. So there were a lot of limitations on this approach. It was page-based. And of course, you know, sometimes you really want to see the parts of the page. It was not action-based, so I was not taking into account any action you do on the website, but only the duration. The duration is not an indication that you are interested. And so in the second prototype, we introduced the notion of zones and action and tried to mitigate the duration with action plus the feedback. So that's the second part. You know, in, in the design of our new system, we are introducing concepts like zones, topics, action, topic in action and weight, and again, the user feedback. So I'm only focusing now on the new prototype. The uh, first idea is that when you go to a, a website, not all the pages are the same. So I can define a location in the website, which is a composition of parts of a page, several pages, and we call it a zone. It could be a set of pages, a set of parts of, within the page, a set of parts of several pages, or any combination of. And the zone has uh, three states. If it's on, it will be uh, used in the calculation of the profile. If it's off, it will not be used in the calculation of the profile. And the first uh, state is, is only used if you do an action on that page. So this is an example. This is like a uh, MAP24 is a British. Uh, uh, equivalent of a, a, a calculating route. And if you see this page 
on the top, you have a banner with advertising on broadband. On the, left of, uh, on the left part, you really have the part which is really key of this website, which is calculating route and the search. And on this part, you have a bunch of uh, advertisement. Here is the wrong company, but that's a British company. Okay, and there's a marketing. So when I define this website, whatever the reason, I don't know the reason. I don't know how if I make money on this website and how, but definitely the layout has been different. So. For example, let's assume I'm the owner of this website. I create three zones, the one on top, the one on the left, and the one here. So how do topic now fit? They don't fit into pages anymore. They fit into zones. That's the difference with the first prototype. Topic are still predefined, but now they are associated to zones. So I can have the same topic um, spanning through different pages, or vertical, or horizontal. And again, I have a weight. So the interesting thing now is I can define the weight of a topic in different location. So if I go back to this example here, that's the first page on top. And you see that the, this, I define, for example, um, five zones. The first zone, Z1, is actually the banner part of both pages. And then I have a specific zone, Z2, where I have the request for filling a form for the calculation. And the result is this page, where you actually give all the details of the, the route and the map. But here, you don't see in this, uh, in this snapshot, but you also have here uh, information on relevance of hotels that are located in this area. The, the idea of this uh, owner website, I think it was rather clear. I'm trying maybe to have the guy who is interested in this map to click an hotel and maybe book it, and maybe I get a percentage out of this booking. But I don't know exactly, but that could be you know, a business reason for that. Now, um, what I do with this website, I define the list of topics. For example, in my example here, five, and they're listed over there. Uh, broadband, finding location, calculating routes, insurance, and hotels. And then I associated the relevant topic to the zone. For example, Z1 is only broadband because I only put uh, uh, advertisement on broadband. But maybe, for me, this is not very important. So you see broadband is 0 0.5 weight. It's a medium interest. But if I look at the zone Z2, somebody that goes there and does an action there, he will be finding a location and calculating route. Uh, 0.6 and 0.8 is rather high. But if you actually do fill this form and you end up here and you do something here, Z4, finding a location and calculating route are actually higher in value because you actually did calculate a route. So your interest in, in the service and calculating route is definitely high for me. Now, this is topic in zones. Now what we've done in the uh, second prototype, we are looking at the action you do in the zones. Now on the pages in the zones. Action are global, so you need to tell me as an owner what kind of action you're interested. You define a set of action that are applicable to the website. And you put, again, a weight, which is the indication of how important is this action for the owner of the website. And again, it depends on, uh, on the reason why you have a website. If the website is actually e-commerce, where buying is a very important action, you will put a very high number. But if you don't sell anything, and for you, only a, you know, the website is just a community where you want people to come back and be happy, and maybe every time they download a file is a success, you will put a, a very high weight on that. So again, you have a definition of action. You put the relevance to the owner side, which is a bit surprising, and then you look at what the people do. Here's an example for my, uh, I define four action. A page request, which is always there. Send a value because I uh, fill the form. If I click and go out on the website, it's different if I click and stay.
But in this example, the really important action for me is the same value when I calculate the row. And I put the higher value, 3, which means for me is the most important action you can do on my website in that particular zone. And I assert it to zone, so you could actually have an action in another location as a different weight, which is reflected that action are context sensitive. So, and we calculated the, um, the profile by looking at the action. I'll show you all in a minute. And looking at the action you do on, in each zone and the duration you spend. At the same time, we are also combining this feedback mechanism so that you can then compare what we think is your interest to what the people say. When I ask for a feedback, the user will be actually asked to either confirm or change the value in the profile. But we don't write over the profile. We compute the difference, and we call it uh, a, uh, this difference will be used for a so-called derived profile. And you can actually set up your own rules that are like a script. If a difference is high or is small or is an average, you do something with this derived profile. And then you can use this derived profile for recalculating it for the next profile. For example, you can detect people that are consistently telling something completely in opposite of what they do and then have it like a classification or, or like that. So the feedback is a way to learn and compare what you've done with what you do. And we don't question the feedback. So we just simply take it as an information. But since the feedback obviously has a, an impact on the profile, we try to mediate it between what you tell me and what you do. And that's the way we do it. So now I'm going a little bit more in detail how we calculated the profile. So for every user, the profile, the part that we calculated by looking at what you do is looking, is done in two parts. It's an action profile, so what you do in the zone, and the duration profile, so how long you stay on the page. The action profile is on the action on the zone, that could be several pages, whereby the duration profile is on pages. And the page can have several zones in it. Since duration and action are like uh, two parts of the story, and which one is more important is not clear, we give a parameter where the owner can actually decide the influence of duration and action in the calculation of the uh, profile. And it's done in this way. If action is that one on the left and duration is here, we multiply per, by two constant so that if I want to have a, uh, a mix between duration and action in the relevance on the calculation of the profile, I can tune A and B. Of course, if A is 1, there is only the action important, or if B is 1, is only the duration. If both of them are 0 0.5, is the balance. But I might actually decide that duration is not very relevant for me, and I put maybe 0 0.8 relevance on action. So every time somebody does an action on my website, this is taking more into account than duration he spends on the website. You can actually change this by analyzing the community and then try to experiment with this number. Now, the action profile works as follows. Uh, I do an action on, on, uh, on my website. First question is where? So I need to define what is the zone in my website where I did this action. That's a zone cool. I have an action. This action is related to um, a zone, and it has a weight that I gave. And this is basically this parameter. Then I multiply this value, which is by the sum of all the weights for all occur action in this zone. And in order to uh, normalize it, we calculate the sum of all the zones where an action occur, and the associate topic list contains the particular topic of interest, divided by the sum of all occur action ways. And it looks like that. And at the end of the day, I get a number between 0 and 1, which is basically telling me uh, the relevance 
of the importance of the action you've done in, on, uh, on the website. At the same time, the duration profile still works on pages. The problem we have is when I download a page, now I have a bunch of zones there, but I cannot really know how much time your eye were on a, on a zone because there's no way I can do that. I can only say how much time you spend on a page. So I'm back to the uh, uh, calculation of uh, duration per page, and the page is associated to topics, but the topics are now embedded into zones. And the only thing I can do, you'll see there, is to compute the time you spend on the page, look at the uh, weight of the topics, you'll see how we do it, and then normalize it by the total duration I spend on in, the, in the whole section on the website. And I get something normalized again between 0 and 1. And then I combine them together, if you remember, and this will be the numbers that I have in my profile. So each user has a profile that is a, a, a list of topics with numbers between 0 and 1, calculated between action and, and duration. Problem is that since we introduce zones and the duration is on pages, we were facing the problem that now I have a page downloaded, but I have a bunch of zones. So I had to come up with what are the topics of this page. The topic of the page are the topic of the zones, but the zones are different, have different weights. So we came up with some kind of a heuristic here, and I said, well, you can decide with rules which one you want to take. You can say, I scan the entire page, I look at all the zones, and for every time I have the same topic with different value, I take the maximum value. Or I take the minimum, or I take the average. Or I can exclude zones that are not sensitive in my calculation. So I'm trying to reconstruct the idea of a topic list per page, but this time assembled by the zones. Of course, you know, each community behaves differently, so I need to be able, as an owner, to customize my strategy by choosing parameters. And the parameters are the following. Setting the topics for content, the weights, Defining which action are relevant in my website and putting a weight, um, turning the states of the zone on off, and using a strategy for calculating the weight of the topic within the page out of the zones. And then I create numbers, and I can monitor. I can, you know, the strategy depends when you want to recalculate the profile. You have a profile where you can see the user Joe. If, for example, has an increased interest in Java or a decreased interest in, uh, in Eclipse and so forth. And now it comes the feedback, because I can ask the user to give me feedback. The feedback is I look at the web, at the profile, either I confirm the number or I give different numbers. And now what we do, we don't take your feedback as a starting point for the profile. We don't, because we don't know the meaning of this feedback. We compute. So if NOP is a profile at time t, I ask for a feedback, or you give me a feedback. And then I calculate the difference between the profile I calculated and the feedback you gave me. That's an information. If I go in time, I can monitor you maybe a time later, and I have another profile. I can calculate the difference between what you've done before and what you've done now. I can still ask for a feedback, and I calculate the difference, but I can even calculate the difference between your feedback. So in other words, I'm able to measure all of these differences. Now, what do I do with all these differences? You no, know, ND is a difference of your behavior that I calculated myself. D is a difference between what you do and what you tell me. And FD is basically the difference between what you tell me in the past and what you tell me now. Of course, you can even combine cross different. What we do, we have a scripting language where the owner can decide to create rules for then calculating a derived profile based upon these numbers. The analogy I always use is you're a pilot. You know how to fly an airplane. And you have a bunch of tools in the cockpit that gives you the altitude, the humidity, and whatever. The tools don't tell you what to do, but they basically, assuming you don't have an automatic pilot system, 
the pilot will say, okay, I set the rule, let's say, if the altitude goes down a certain threshold, I will do something. And here the same thing. For example, you could say, well, if somebody is changing mind and he keeps on giving me different feedback, I might classify this guy as a behaviorally inconsistent in the way he tells me. Or on top, by checking what you do, it seems to be unstable. I can then look at the vertical and say, the person is telling me something completely different than what he does. What does it mean? I don't know, but I just monitor that. And it's consistent in time. Then I can just uh, somehow try to turn into a meaning. For example, if the difference between what you tell me and what you do is very high, I can infer, for example, that you're not very happy. Or your reason to be on that website is a different one than what you tell me. No matter what it is, I can monitor that. Or I can check it. So that's basically the numbers. Now, the thing is that I have a bunch of numbers at the end, and it's very difficult to do something with numbers because I have, you know, number between 0 and 1, maybe a million people, a million profile recalculating in time, and very difficult to understand what's going on unless I look at one particular guy, Joe, and I can you know, spot his profile in time, then it's okay. But if I want to know if Joe is doing something similar to others, the only way is to try to cluster the behavior, what I think is a behavior, by looking at the profile, which is this combination. So it's not a click stream clustering like a traditional thing. It's a clustering on the profile. So we are clustering now on the profiles that we are combining with the feedback. Um, clustering, we are not expert on clustering, so we try to see whether we could use something already out there by clustering uh, the profile. Um, we realize that if you use classical clustering uh, algorithms like k-means, they go out of scale as soon as you have five topics and more than 10 users. So we try to adapt our own clustering mechanism. Uh, we invented one, but we don't claim that this is the best. To try to have a cluster which scales, because the thing is, what are the factors here? Number of topics and number of visitors. Oh, and he has to be able to cluster so that at the end is reasonable the time to recompute the cluster. So we came up with something. I'd be happy to have feedback. You know, we have a paper on that that can be uh, downloaded from our website. And we try to adapt um, a cluster by priority algorithm where we don't take all the topics into consideration but only the one a certain priority. So we try to reduce uh, the, the work of the algorithm to a certain setting a certain threshold so that it can scale up. And we did some little experiment on that, and it's uh, promising. With the idea that I'm trying to visualize, and the visualization is also a very uh, difficult part, use it with some similarity. For example, if I take two, in, two users, let's say US and U7, I might come up and say they have a little interest in Java. Why do I say that? Because in the course of their profile, the action, the duration of what they did on my website and their feedback combined came up with numbers that are maybe below a certain threshold, 0 0.3, for example, whereby this user, Bob, had absolutely no interest in Java. Maybe he didn't do any action on the website. He didn't spend any time or very little time on any page where I start to do Java, so I put them there. Whereby this guy maybe did a specific action, maybe download code. And code, downloading code, and spending time on that was a very high weighted action, and therefore I put them there. Now, in this case, Alice is on her own, but if two people would have done similar pattern, then I could cluster them and say, well, if I have a community of, let's say, seven users, the people that I'm focusing are the ones who have at least some interest in Java. Then I can get these two guys and that guy, and I don't want to look at the rest. See, the cluster would avoid that you look at a million people. Now, what you want to do, you can choose a domain. You can find millions of domains where there's a reason why you want to cluster people. And depending on the reason, this could help you 
to classify. Now, if this is actually on time, then you have trends. This could be now, snapshot now, like a, a, a week later, my community has completely changed. People are disappearing from Java, so what happened? I don't know, but I can monitor that something's happening in my community or my website. What you do is another story, but at least I can have a feeling of what's going on. And that's the whole you know, exercise of doing this project here. Uh, if you, as I say, if you're interested in clustering, I'd be more than happy to send you more detail. And we're not really um, expert on clustering, so any cluster algorithm that works very fast on a bunch of numbers would we'll be very happy to use it. Um, I'd like to finish. Well, if somebody has any interest in implementation, I have a few, let's say, additional slides on, on implementation. But to make it short, and also if you have any question, um, I have one topic that is actually interesting to me, at least, which is likely not really technical. It's not really very technical. But when you talk about profile, I think you are somehow in trouble by definition. Because the idea that you are creating a profile to a user is always very scary. Think of somebody who goes to a supermarket and you create a profile of what he has done. Or oh, he has touched uh, melon two times today. Or oh, he has spent five minutes on tomatoes. And then, you know, and you infer that this guy is a vegetarian. Or at least he has a lot of interest on, on veggie. He didn't look at the meat section. So I don't know if he's vegetarian or not, but definitely he's interested in, 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 uh, in fruit and vegetable. And I recorded this information, and now this is stored. We use a database like a DB2, and this is stored. How would you feel about it? Well, I think the whole idea of profiling has been captured, and uh, you guys also did some interesting uh, rules for what I, co I call business code. Know, data protection, security, and stuff like that. I think uh, this is a very important issue. There's one area that I don't think it, um, is not mentioned in any, let's say, computer science presentation. And I call it social. Uh, maybe you'll be very surprised to, to hear from me. But I think it, ultimately what we are doing by looking at the profile of people is to have them coming back which if you look at marketing and say this is a good thing. I'm really stick, I'm sticking this to my website. I think uh, there's also a, an issue that we should be aware is to what extent this coming back becomes an addiction. I know it, look, it sounds very strange, but it would be good to understand to what extent the technology becomes a platform for addictive behavior. It's not that the platform makes the addiction, but it's actually addictive people that can use it. So that's why I wanted to conclude, you know, not technical, by avoiding the sickness becomes sickness or repeated becomes addictive. Um, I'm actually uh, uh, earlier than expected. I have some more information on implementation, but I'd be happy to take questions, you know, um, because that's the uh, last uh, slides of the presentation. Yes. Uh, what we've done is, in the first implementation, which is this toy, we use it on a small community, uh, project base. Um, uh, 50 pages uh, website and a community of 60 people that are using this website on a regular basis. And what we did is, we tried to see how to implement the zones. Now, to implement the zones, you have two possibilities. Conceptually, you could take a website that is already existing and try to infer from the website the content and define the zones. And that's what we did. We basically um, look at a website and you, know, the, you get the, the, the page from the web server and then manually, unfortunately, for the moment being, you try to understand what is the content of the website Define the topic, define the zones. Zones are created in a way that you need to know the last data modification of the page and the ID of each element. And then you create your uh, database of zone and elements in, in a DB2. That's what we do. It's actually the good thing about it that you can actually use it on any website because it's not really 
uh, done by you. In theory, you could actually incorporate in a content management system with a little bit of uh, extension and then design your website already with the zone. And so the experiments that we've done are actually, at the moment, still on a small scale. I mean, the great challenge here also for the cluster, and if I have a, you know, a big portal and I have a million users and then each user spends a session, let's say, of minutes and is repeated, you know, what does it mean? And that's basically the things that we are very much interested in because at the end of the day, it's only by doing some intelligent data mining of this number that you can actually come up with something useful because it would be very unlikely that you look at one particular person because you want to see. Um, yes? Uh, so you're getting a bunch of feedback from, let's say, you know, some sort of your users. Yes. Uh, did you ever try to consider the difference between the feedback and the actual profile as an error and use machine learning approaches to, to adjust the ways that you assign to topics and actions? To minimize this error? Um, that's a very good question because uh, that's what I call scripting rules. In reality, you can even have um, a logic system that automatically, given certain rules that you program, define the derived profile depending on the differences. Uh, for example, let's assume that you denote that there's a uh, more than 50% of the feedback is different, significant from the original one. Then you could do something. Or uh, only 10% of the feedback is different than the other one. Then you do something else. And basically, what you could actually come up with is a rule system. Then depending on your business rules, you could then create a derived profile accordingly. For example, let's assume I'm not really interested in the people that constantly are telling me something completely different than what they do. So 90% 90, 90 of what they tell me is completely different. I don't, I'm not interested. I can program it that I basically cluster them in, a, in, a, in an area which I'm not interested. Maybe I'm very interested in this guy that are very consistent. Let's say 80% of what they tell me is consistent to what they do. And I focus on those guys. Or maybe that's not the case. And so, yes, you know, any, let's say, intelligence system that would take this number and do a, a business rule with that would be good. But I'm only producing numbers. That's basically what I do. Let, let, let's go to a very simple uh, example. Let's say we have only two topics, C++ and Java. Yes. And most of the people tell us that uh, C++ rate is, is lower than what it should have been. Yeah. And that Java rate is, is higher than what it should have been. Yes. So maybe the rules that they assign, that the, the assigned administrator assigned to, to those topics are, yes. are not appropriate. Maybe if, if you can change them somewhat, then feedback is going is to be very consistent. With the yeah, that's actually would be like having a, a system that learns from the community and adjusts it. I think it's all possible. It's only a matter of what kind of priority you put on that. I mean, but that's a good observation. In particular, I would say when the profile becomes public to the community, it could even be that the community is influenced by, oh, 80% of my uh, friends have an increased interest in Java in the last week. I, I'm sure that this has an impact on your behavior. Or 80% of the people have a decreased interest on the topic in the last week. Why? Now, maybe you're still interested in the topic, but I think that this is influencing the, the community. So I think it's in both ways. It could be that the system learns so you can adjust your weight as an owner. But it could also be that the community evolves. And this is an area that I think is very interesting. We didn't have any time to look at that. And it also goes a bit into the social network things because especially with the web 2.0 now the community is influencing much more than before but my starting point was you know i have a typical website i do the content the, the guy come wants to get something back and he might get something that he's looking for or not with the web 2.0 and the community thing i think it, this creates a completely different dynamic that could be an interesting very interesting area to look at so i take it i also added the other part because if a profile is visible to the community, there is definitely a, a, an impact on the people, as opposed to if each individual profile is only visible to the user and the owner. 
Yes. So if the um, someone's use of profile is, is inconsistent with their feedback. Yes. Um, where do you think the error lies? Or how do you measure ground truth? Is it is the feedback wrong? Is the profile system wrong? We're not trying to understand if it's right or wrong. That's the thing. We don't try to give a, a meaning. I'm only monitoring that the feedback you give me is different than what you do. I don't try to question. What you could do is to try to see on the scale of, of all the users whether this is a pattern. I'm sure that if you see the 80% of your community seems to be telling you something completely different than what they do, there must be something wrong on, on either your website has another meaning to them, or maybe this community is not the community that you trust. But this is your interpretation. I don't come up with any rules for them. But you can come up with your own rules and say, well, learn it. Because that's a number that you can do action with the community. But I stop there. Because any attempt for me to cast a semantic would be wrong, I believe. At least that's, that's uh, the, the, the starting point I have. More questions or criticism, or if you see anything that also doesn't seem to make sense, you know, please let me know because I'm very interested. You know. Yeah, I have a question. I guess I wasn't very clear on why you needed the website owner to specify the different ways on the topic. How does that go to the? What does that use for again? Let's assume that you design a website, and you have a reason for this website. You know. But I'm a user, I don't know necessarily. Is is you put content on the website and you have your reason to structure the website with content and, and, and allow me to do certain action on the website for reaching your goals. So, so is it a way of like measuring which users are more important? Yes, yes. Yeah, correct, correct. I think it somehow is a way to qualify the user in relation to your goals. So if your goal is, for example, that you want as many people as possible to download free material, the more people do that, the more they are close to the kind of uh, user profile you really would like to have. Yes. yes. Buying would be the obvious. Yeah. Any more questions? Well, if not, then thank you very much. And, uh